September is here, and September hosts the biggest daylight loss across the Northern Hemisphere out of any month of the year. On 5 News Chief Meteorologist Matt Sanders, we're talking about who is losing the most and what kind of losses are we talking about throughout the course of September till the 30th. Well, this map shows you. It's all based on your latitude. You know, September is the month where at the beginning of the month, we start off with more daylight than nighttime, and then by the end of the month, we have more nighttime than we have daytime. And it's all thanks to the fall equinox that's going to be coming up on the 22nd. Once we hit the 22nd, we're going to start to decrease the pace of how much we're losing. But I tell you what, September overall has the biggest daylight losses of the year. But how much are you going to lose? It's all based on your latitude. The farther north you go, you know, you hear about folks, how they go in complete darkness. So the farther north you go, the changes get more drastic. For example, in the northern United States, these numbers all show you how much you'll at least lose. And usually the 90 minutes or 80 minutes, it's, that's right at the southern tier of the color. As you go higher up in the color, you start to approach the next tier. But this black color right along the U.S.-Canadian border, International Falls, you know, we're more north of Minot, we're north of Missoula, we're north of Seattle, there within the about what 30 miles of the US Canadian border we're losing at least 100 minutes by September 30th and you know, we're talking about losing you know just over three minutes of daylight per day throughout the month of September and then 90 minutes from northern uh, Minnesota right into the heart of North Dakota Bismarck half west towards Dickinson and then Hel Helena and Missoula Billings in the west to Seattle we're losing an hour and a half you go a little bit farther south and southern Minnesota from Minneapolis and in Milwaukee and Madison uh, Chicago we're right at the cutoff we're right at 80 minutes of daylight loss for the month of September that extends west in the Badlands Rapid City off to Portland Oregon you got the next tier of 70 minutes from St. Louis Indianapolis west to uh, Topeka Denver Salt Lake City and just north north of the Oakland area. And then you have less daylight being lost in the desert southwest. You're going to be losing about 50 minutes in Phoenix and uh, getting close to 60 minutes in LA. Las Vegas, about 60 minutes or so, Albuquerque. And then east into the Ozarks, Oklahoma, Arkansas, southern Missouri, we're going to be losing about an hour, give or take. And uh, that will continue in towards the east coast as well. In the northeast, if you live in the Great Lakes, many of us are going to be losing about 80 minutes. But if you live in the UP of Michigan, that's 90 minutes. Uh, the 80 minutes stretches throughout most of New York from Syracuse and Buffalo east to Boston, uh, Concord, Bangor, Maine, uh, Burlington, Vermont. And then we've got that 70 minute loss from New York City into Philadelphia, much of Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Columbus, Indianapolis, and then farther south, once you head south of Louisville, south of uh, Washington, D.C., we're in this hour range, extending east into Charlotte and Raleigh, Richmond, Virginia, and Nashville. And then Atlanta's the next cutoff. You go from 60 minutes losing to about 50 minutes there in most of Georgia. And then the very southern portions of the continent of the United States. So south of Houston, we're talking about Corpus Christi and Brownsburg, and then from Tampa south into Orlando and Miami, just about 40 minutes. So we're still losing a good amount even uh, towards the south, but it won't be as drastic towards our neighbors in the north. But we're going to be losing a lot of daylight, and of course, the more daylight we can lose, the more cool air we can get. It's all from an atmospheric science perspective. We're still adding more heat into the air than we're taking out, and so that's why temperatures are still warm going into September. But with bigger daylight losses, the farther north you go into the Canadian Plains, once we cool those down with less daylight, eventually you can get stronger cold fronts to dive south into the United States. So September is just kind of the early start of some of those cold fronts starting to move in from the north. The question is how far south do they move? A lot of times they get their way right towards uh, St. Louis, kind of matching up with I-70 from Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis. And then once we get to October, those cold fronts should be able to dive farther south in the Ozarks and parts of the Appalachians. Now specifically in western Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma, from Fayetteville to Fort Smith, uh, Poto, Salisaw, we're all going to be losing roughly but about an hour and a couple minutes of change. So in Fayetteville, it's five minutes. In Fort Smith, it's one hour and three minutes. You go north to Bentonville, it's closer to one hour and six minutes. But the biggest changes you're probably going to notice will be that sunrise and sunset. So at the beginning of the month, you know, we're starting with sunrises still before the seven o'clock hour. But by the end of the month, it's after seven o'clock. We got to wait until after seven in order to get the sun to get up in the sky. In sunset range, you know, we've already had sunsets now before 8 o'clock, but by the end of the month, we're barely going to have any more 7 p.m. sunsets. You know, as soon as we get to October, we're talking about sunsets in the 6 p.m. time range. So we're going to be losing a lot of daylight over an hour in western Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma.